Hi, I'm trying to make a video again. This is my newest model, uh, USS Cerritos from Star Trek Lower Decks. I've worked on this for about a month now. Um, just wanted to, you know, try to get something that I can enjoy from the show. I mean, I really like the look of the ship because it reminds me of more of the um, TV series ships than it does the movie ones, which I'm not always a big fan of, but so I thought it'd be fun to actually have one and, you know, it, it's just more fun to make it yourself. Um, so I just wanted to explain the parts of it because I, I know I'm not always the best on doing it through the website. So component wise, um, you know, standard engineering hall in the center. It prints in two pieces on the plate. I did not do a, a great job uh, gluing it up. Um, uh, deflector dish print separately. I might put two versions in there. I just figured it was a part that would be easier to print uh, separately if somebody wanted to do in like transparent blue or something like that. Um, also, I just wanted to show two different directions I tried printing it. This is it done vertically. You can see there's a lot of noise on the front of it since that's the very top layer. So, you know, it just does that stair stepping even though I did it at 0.12. Um, obviously, this you know the sides are all nice and smooth looking, um, but that's not much of a point since it will be inserted into there. Uh, I don't want to put it in because if I put it in, it may not come out. It still needs some sanding on that. But this this is printed on the side with supports, and as supports are something most people want to avoid, but that means the ugly sides of the angles because angles are always the biggest challenge when you're printing vertically and that's the uh, support side but that's all going to be hidden um, while this looks pretty good I have slight printer error there you can see I got some lines going but uh, that's fixable a little bit of putty um, so I would suggest printing it printing it in the direction you may not always think about doing it just because it won't matter in the end um, I was going to say, the other reason I did put this separately is too, as I didn't want to have that seam straight down the center. I figured it'd be hard to, uh, rectify a gap in the, uh, I don't know what you call it, like this groove inside of there. Figured the less detailed sanding people got to do, the better. Um, yeah, there's the bottom, top, you know of strips. Um, I, I did put these windows in here. If you ever look close in the show, there is a, a black stripe on wherever there's windows. Um, it's not something that's always evident because it seems to be uneven where some seasons have it, some don't, even though you think the third season would have been like an yeah, important ship. But hey, that's the way it is. Um, so this is my first take at the solid the cell um, before basically I was prototyping this is all just prototyping so the first idea was just a standard peg in there split here because I wanted to print it vertically um, so the big reason to vertically is I tried splicing it sideways and you can see it get this very ugly stair stepping and this is when I'm I was trying for transparent section so this is all hollow and I tell you, this strip is fragile as heck when you're trying to remove the supports. So that was a no-go. But then this just slots here. And the vertical support. Um, where's my good one? Oh, yeah. Sure, one of these off here. And then the vertical support would go into there. And the idea is if somebody wanted to fill those lines, they could... You know, this is technically a separate color, but you can play with it. Um, some troubles that came upon when I, my first iteration here is I figured it'd be near impossible to paint inside of there. And I had made the grooves um, for the warp engine. Part of, well, I guess it's not actually warp. I'm sorry, I'm not always great with names, but uh, you know, these ridges that are here, um, I made them too fine. So I had to uh, change that. This is the update version. So as you can see, lines look a lot nicer. They are larger 
So they don't exactly match the show, but hey, you know, it's, 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 it's a compromise on that one. Um, and then I just want to show that, that that's going to be the hardest part to, to uh, paint. And I am thinking about changing that, maybe make a separate piece of Mike plot band if they really want to. Um, when I do the light up version, the idea is that it's just going to be a strip. You just drop down this, you know, the whole way, but that's a future project. Um, did have a slight problem with this, uh, but that's fixable yet again. But the idea is you have this, grab the engineering, and it just plops in. There we go. Nice and hot on there. Um, so where's the, uh... oh boy. Oh, you know what? This is the actually the yeah, improved version. Okay, the other part of the improved version is the engines are separate. Uh, the front, of the, the front of the cell, or I'm sure there's an actual term for this, is separate. You know, actually, actually, just like in the show when they were doing the refits, you could see them, you know, pushing that in. So that's kind of fun in that regard. Um, I did also make this thin. I'm going to thicken this up. Well. You know, putting and taking some space out of the vertical support. But the idea is then it will slide into here and you're all good. I did make this hole too tight. I fixed it on the actual one. So this is my test fit with the fixed, you know, the fixed size and it goes in just fine. Um, the idea is then you would. You could either use this as a glue up and then pull this out, or you could use the um, vertical um, supports as a glue up assistant as well. Um, get those glued up, and then this you can paint separately and just plop it in when you're done. Uh, one detail I do want to point out it is this this side is the widest um, part of it. Uh, between like these uh, these arms, I, I don't know what you want to call them because this is supposed to be red right here. Um, while these two are smaller, they are the bottom ones. This is the very bottom with the smaller stripes. Top, biggest stripe goes up. Just to, so it is kind of keyed to its uh, keyed so it goes in. Um, as you can see, this kind of cracks it a little bit. That's what I mean by too tight. I I can fix my version. With, so this isn't wasted with just some sand, you know, some sanding sticks, and I'm good to go. It's, uh, but it is fixed on the version I'm going to publish. Um, now on to the saucer. Saucer printed two parts. Um, they both print on their side because I, 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 I know real models. You know, they they do. That, but as I said, when you're when you're printing upwards, that's your enemy. Any curves. Curves are enemies when you're printing upwards. So I want to put as much of the of the mass facing up because it gives a really nice finish in compa comparison. Now, there are trouble spots. Like the very top here, I did get some very light stair stepping. Yeah, again, light sandpaper. You're good to go. Um, it also allowed these strips to look very nice. Um, I will warn you, if you think about scaling the model, this will be a rough part because it is currently at one millimeter thickness. And I don't think you can do much thinner without a smaller nozzle because otherwise they'll just disappear when you actually try to print it. Uh, it's the same way why, why I did these uh, windows the way I did. Uh, they might disappear as well because they are rounded on top and bottom for easier printing. It helps with it. Um, and uh, anything else major? Oh yes, this part right here. This has a slight overhang. As you can see, there's a strip. There's a very uh, fine strip, like it's supposed to be black inside of here. A very fine strip because it's so fine and it's basically overhanging. It had nothing else to go with, so it did get a little rough. Especially here, there was like a, you know, a whole string up that I had cut off. Um, so be be prepared, you might have to support that section manually because my slicer did not automatically support it, but it is accurate, so I figure it's a trade-off that most people will, will willing to do because it's just light sanding. It should look as good as, you know, light sanding, then obviously a spiller, a, a filler uh, coat with another light sanding. It should look really good. Um, so this is for fitment. 
uh, for alignment when you're uh, putting it together. Um, I did also have a minor printing issue with mine in that it did warp on the ends. That is a bed adhesion issue. As you can see, there's a gap. Uh, that it, it's a bed adhesion on my part. I have my door shut on my printer, and as I understand, that's because it's called minor warping. If I would have left it open, it may have turned out great. But this is still salvageable. Yet again, some putty in the middle there, and it should look just fine if anybody else runs in that issue. The center is locked together, so it should be just fine. Filler, sand, it looked perfect. Um, I did this vertical cut because um, there is actually supposed to be a line there anyway. So I figured that kind of makes sense. And most of the details are pretty large, except for down here, which would be the toughest part. And then along, along these ridges. But there's, I put no windows along this line, so there's no windows that are cut in half or even close to it. So if you do filler, you won't have issues. Um, same down here, it's low detail along here, so filling it should be quite easy. Um, now the vertical, the vertical supports, I played with these a little bit. This was my first go. As you can see, some really bad printing issues. Uh, it's because I used this as the flat angle. So if you see, if you print that flat, that's a lot of parts that are hanging in there while you're printing. So there's nowhere for it to go. And this is with supports and it still didn't, does not look good at all. Now you could smooth that out and all that. So, but what I did is I got a little clever with this and instead, I uh, kept this at an angle. As you can see, it's cut at an angle. So the idea is it prints vertical like this. So this part is straight up and down. It maintains it. There, it, there it's, I still did get some issues down here, but that's a lot less to fix and still have an accurate um, you know, shape. So that's just light sanding. What I like to do personally is I just grab a hobby knife and I just scrape this off and it makes, it looks pretty good. And then a uh, filler putty will make it look perfect. So that's that. Um, I, to fix mine, I, there, I do have a spacer in there. So don't worry, the spacer will not be in there. I will have this cut and angle so it will fit flush from the get go. Um, I also wanted to show how I print the cells. They, they do require a lot of supports. So this is fresh off the plate um, yesterday, but still fresh. Um, I did not take anything off of it. Um, I just wanted to uh, show where my supports are. So the supports in there, because that's where the um, you know, engineering hall connects. And I'll just pull this out. Now I do print on a Bamboo Lab P1P, and I will say the nicest thing about them is, oh my gosh, their supports are wonderful. I mean, look how clean that is. That's like no, nothing. I mean, I got a little bit there, but yet again, that's just a little bit of cleanup with a hobby knife, and I get that part off. Come on. And yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good. Just a little more work on it, and it should look really good. Um, but this printing vertical, everything looks really good if I, I think so. I'd even maintain some of the details, like there's a little, like if you look close, there is a very tiny groove on the actual model, on the, in the real ship. And I was glad that got maintained when I printed it this way. So just extra little detail that's pretty nice. Um, now with the, well, how I did cut it, you, there will be a slight loss with, um, this, it is, it is grooving that runs along here. This is on the exterior part of the nacelle. Um, it's on both sides. Um, I had to cut it in such a way that it does cut right at the end of there. So, um, whoever makes this might have to remake that if you want to maintain that. Uh, it was a trade-off because I had to cut it somewhere. And then I'll just pop this out. Yep, there we go. So, and then a little bit of pulling this off. 
oh boy yeah and you can see it went th through there because that was my large hole and i know that's a weak point yet again i'm gonna fix that on the release model because it's an easy fix but that's why we prototype well because we find these weaknesses that we overlooked uh, but yet again, uh, this 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 goes into there. Let me get this part off real quick. Get that off. Now, if you ever look close at this part, it does have a lot of steps uh, i mean it, you know going up here because this is is grooved inwards and that does need support so this will need a lot of cleanup so heck if you look in resin print any part of it this might be a good part to consider resin printing because heck you can make it clear anyway um but yeah just to just to show that this hunk of thing is in there and it is fairly easy to clean out if you're careful. I'm kind of rushing right now and I'm hoping I don't make a mistake or grab something I shouldn't. But you see, look at that, look at that. Looks terrible, but it's it's under there and it looks nice. Um, but yeah, please, you know, fine picks, hobby knives, things like that will make this a lot easier. Personally, I love very fine pliers. I've seen people use their cut off, their side cutters. I don't like using side cutters on support material simply because it cuts the support material. I like to keep it intact as much as I can so I can use it to my advantage. When I'm ripping, I'd rather it rip something off while it's going rather than it itself cut, getting cut in half. Yeah. See, look at that. That's cleaning up real nice. Just little fine details that still need cleaned up, but yeah, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? It's like a cocoon coming off. I'm really happy on how this this work this came out because I was debating how I was going to get this because I really wanted this to still look good. But I had the challenge of how I was going to make it look good. All right. Um, I know I went a bit, it's a bit longer than I meant. I just kind of wanted to go in detail because it's hard to show. I'll show these going on here. And then there's lower half. And of course, I kind of laughed that it's kind of like, you know, uh, that's why I call pod racing. <laughs> it kind of does look like a pod racer with, without the saucer section. All right, um, then everything should go well together. I don't, I don't suggest um, gluing the, the the vertical supports onto the saucer until the very end, simply because it's you know most of your finishing is going to be these two sections sections separately. It'll make life a, a lot easier because you won't be fighting the saucer the entire time all right uh thanks for watching i just uh wanted to show it off thank you